and welcome to Free Cheese episode 438. I'm your Joe Dix, joined by Matt Sellner. Hello. Mark Augustiniak. What's up? The Free Cheese is a weekly video game podcast about video games, brought to you once a week by thefreecheese.com. This week we're talking Portal 2. Mark and Matt are taking another trip down the trivia dungeon. We're going to introduce a brand new segment and a little bit more. But for that, I want to know, Matt, what eating contest would you do well at? Mm. Soup. Oh, gosh. Mark, save us from this nightmare. What eating contest would you do well at? Uh, Doritos. Doritos. How many bags of Doritos? Let's, should mm. we quantify this in full size or snack size bags? Oh, full size. Full. full cause I, okay. I, I kind of want to change my you answer already, but we can stick with Doritos. Count, see, you can't count the snack bags because you, you, there's too many. You lose track. True. Well, yeah, but uh, but if this is a sponsored event by Frito Lay, I assume that's those are the size they would donate, right? Yeah, because it's like because you could also give them out to people in the crowd much easier. Mm. There's like, more of a markup on these. Yeah, yeah. Like in those bags with me, they they don't last. Uh, I was gonna say Twizzlers because I just I, I bought like a decent size bag of Twizzlers and it's already gone. It's it hasn't even been like three days. So, uh, how quickly do you think you could eat a hundred Twizzlers? Hmm. How quickly? Hmm. I think after a while, my teeth would start to hurt just from like tearing it. Whatever. It should, yeah. Uh. But I could probably get it done under half an hour. If Matt, I, how many gallons of soup do you assume you're about to be consuming? I mean, I take two daily. So. Oh no. God. No. Uh. I don't know. I I I guess it depends on the soup, right? But uh, like if we're talking like Maryland crab, chicken noodles, like that kind of stuff. I don't know. I could I go ham. I could probably. I said two gallons jokingly, but I think the one and a half, the two. I think I could do it. And like, would it still you have to be... walk around with that in you though? That's fine. <laughs> Sorry. Like, would it still oh, be in okay. a bowl, or would it? Would you have in a cup at this point? Is well, it a straw? I'm pouring mm. into a bowl, spoon, slurp, pour. I, spoon, I think it's slurp. fair game for consumption, right? If you think about a hot dog eating contest, they're dipping them in buckets water. of water and sliding them down the throat. As long as you See, get the whole thing in, you're good. So, what about those people who swallowed a, who just swallowed a hot dog's whole, don't even chew on them? Yeah, that's we're, we're just like <gasps> like every time. Yeah, they do that <laughs> and they. <laughs> Put the bread somewhere else. This question was brought to you by uh, an episode in, I believe, the final season of The Sopranos, as I got through that, where they attended a cannoli eating oh, contest. Oh, naturally, naturally. And I thought, I could do that. I think I would be okay at a cannoli eating contest. But then again, it's the sweetness might hit you after a while. I legitimately, I we used to go to wing night quite a bit. I feel like wings, you could do it, but you've got to be careful with the wings because of, uh, I think, spice-wise, you know? Like, we were always pretty good about going to the all-you-can-eat and getting whatever. The problem, though, if they change up the sauce, that'll hit you hard too quickly. But maybe wings. Cannoli seems like a safe bet, though. A good house. A lot of cream. Cannoli. It's a lot of bread. It's just cheese. A lot of cream. In a way. Actually, cheese. I could do a lot of cheese. It'd be a disaster for a say. while after. <laughs> but I did it after the fact. Talk about me yes. holding on to the soup. All that cheese is okay. The cheese would become a rock where you, I feel like you would walk and you just hear it inside, like stepping on a waterbed. You know what I mean? <laughs> just like that would be your body for at least a month, I feel. <laughs> where Doritos, though, that's a solid... That at least breaks down into little bits of uh, chip in your body, and then you become one chip man, and th- that's it. That's the end of time. One chip man's my favorite anime. <laughs> Is Portal Two your favorite Valve game? 
Uh, it's up there. It's mine. It's uh, I, yeah, I think so too. Portal Two's super good. Uh, we're talking Portal Two this week. First release April eighteenth, two thousand eleven, for the PC. I believe it was April nineteenth that it came out on PS three and three sixty. Because I believe it coincided with the release of Mortal Kombat and the shutdown of the PlayStation Network. So there's that. Mm. Developed by Valve, published by Valve. Related games that we may bring up in this segment. Portal, obviously, and Half-Life. The the back-of-the-box quote that I have from the PlayStation 3 version of this game just says, Start thinking with portals. Which I feel like would have been more appropriate for the first game. The second game, I felt like they would have, especially knowing where this game goes with its story and how vast I think this is, uh, I thought that maybe something else a little bit. But yeah. Um, so Matt, Portal 2 was on your list. Why did you choose Portal 2 for our Season 10 of video games? Yeah, uh, I think this is a good time to kind of like start the theme with a lot of my games of like just going through time and Matt's video game career, just big games that is remember for different reasons or whatever. And Portal 2 was one of those first games that uh like I never really used to play video games like at night kind of thing, like late into the night, but you know, of course like going into high school and college and stuff like that, that changed. But like Portal 2 was the first game that I like started like at nine o'clock and I blinked it. It was 4 a.m. Um, and it, I just gravitated to it. Like it clicked with me instantly. I love the puzzle mechanics. I love the writing, the journey that you go through um, with all the different characters and stuff. It just, just a game that resonated with me so much, especially at the time. and and revisiting it quite recently i still resonates with me very very strongly um yeah it's just really good we'd all played portal 2 prior to this iteration right did yeah. we play it when it came out mark you played it back then mm-hmm. did you had you played the first one before playing portal 2 mark yeah and the other valve stuff like was this something you were Oh yeah, I, like, I feel like I re- remember it being a big deal that Gabe Newell came out on stage at the PlayStation event to av- to announce that Portal Two would be on consoles. This was also the gateway to Steam for at me, and I think a lot of other people in a way that were mostly console dominated because you, by de facto, buying it on PlayStation Three, and I be- I don't know actually if it worked this way on 360. I think it was just a but PS3, if I remember. I think it was just PS3, where they would create a Steam ID for you that you would then get a... The first thing, you got a free copy of Portal 2 for PC because you owned it on PS3. And that was how I ended up with a Steam account and then started poking through Steam and going, oh, I get it. <laughs> but I, my experience with Valve prior to that was I played a little bit... Uh, I played Portal 1 from the orange box I had rented Half-Life 2, maybe, on PS2, and we got stuck somewhere. I think, like, physically stuck. Like, I think a a ladder was broken or something. I think it was just a glitch that we probably could have restarted the game and gotten there or something, but uh, we didn't, and that was about it. So Portal 2, although I had played Portal 1, and I, I think that's the other thing going into Portal 2 that I don't know how much we need to talk about here, but... Portal 1 was such a phenomenon among the internet meme culture. The whole, the cake is a lie thing, which surprisingly was absent for the most part in Portal 2, right? Like they did not, they they could have leaned into that a bunch here and they did not. But Portal 1, that whole thing just, once you've kind of discovered that secret and that whole like weird eerie thread of Portal 1 with... Something's not right here. There's something you're not being told. There's something you're not being shown. That was such a cool revelatory moment for, I think, storytelling in video games that when it comes to Portal 2, I don't know. I felt like I was worried ahead of this. Like, how do you 
do that again? How do you subvert expectations and how do you keep the suspense and surprise? And I didn't mean to like kind of jump into full impressions of the game already, but I feel like Portal 2 always impressed me because it is one of those prime examples of something being greater than the sum of its parts where the story on its own, fine. The gameplay on its own, fun. Like I think everything's good, but I think just combined, there's something kind of magic about the essence of Portal 2 that you don't get in most video games. And I think they pulled it off really well. And that's not even talking about the co-op, right? Because the co-op, you end up with a sequel to the game that you've just played all built. In. It's That's super cool in that way. Um, so I guess, what did you guys... What did you like about Portal 2, Matt? Uh, I think... I mean, I, I, I think the puzzle design is really clever. And it, it kind of knows... Like, as soon as you're starting to feel tired of something, it knows the exact timing to introduce something new or get you, like, at least give you a story bit, kind of, to break it up. Um, I think there, I think the pace is something to be said here, but I, I, the characters, the writing, the, you know, the jokes, the potatoes, the birds pecking a potato, like, I, all that. The, the Cave Johnson stuff is fantastic. Um, and like like this even like if this game like didn't have like the cool puzzle aspects to it i could easily see me still going through this game cuz i wanted to learn more about this world i wanted to learn more about cave johnson i wanted to learn more about moon rocks and see where this potato takes me like i think i think its story for it being a, a puzzle game is so clever and well thought out and good and paced brilliantly uh yeah, I, I, I think that's like this main draw to me. That is that story, those characters, the writing. Yeah, I think Stephen Merchant in this game, as uh, what was it, Wheatley? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That whole him just being there and being your buddy throughout this whole thing. I don't know. He was. Um, I feel like he was in a lot of stuff around that time, and I haven't seen him in much since. I think he still is in plenty of things. I just haven't seen him in anything. But, um, yeah, I think just his delivery of what that character was, I think, like, made it much like, um, well, I, yeah. I mean, GLaDOS wasn't necessarily a companion in the first one. She was, but just the way you had that kind of banter back and forth well you it was one-sided banter (laughs) yeah um mark what stands out about portal 2 to you i think just how grand it is compared to the first game like the first one you can get through fairly quickly and like it starts to like towards the end it kind of starts to like really show what what you can do with it and how creative that game really is. And then like two just took that and ran with it, but then at the same time was still in a way um like paying attention to that. Like they were still being fully aware of that first game. And and it there's so much like context they threw in there and threads that they connected with that first game too. Like uh like like when you're walking through like the old part of Aperture and there's like the little like uh, take your daughter to work day, um, science projects and most of them were like potato based. So then you have the one like generic volcano one, and then that last one that's like the overgrown like yeah. potato thing. If you look at the names, it's actually your character that did that one. Cause um, huh? Cause her her name is Chell. I missed that. Yeah. And then, uh, so I thought that, that was really cool. And then, like, the way you have to, like, fight Wheelie is, like, the reverse way of fighting Gladys from the first one. And, like, and then some. So it, it was really neat just to see just, like, just remnants of the first game weaved throughout it. And in a way, the way they divided the game up uh, between, like, the nine or ten chapters, whatever, um, it kind of felt like each section was the length of the first game in a way, but each had their own style to it. So it, it felt very digestible. It didn't feel like it, it overwelcomed its stay. Like, 
I like to echo Matt. But uh, yeah, that that's what that's what I liked about it. It just it felt like it hit it checked all the boxes for me of what a sequel should be. Yeah, and I think that's why it's been probably close to impossible to get a sequel to it again. Like, mm. how do you do? I mean, I guess I thought the same thing about Portal One going into Portal Two. Like, how do you top that, or how do you do this again? So, if anyone can do it, I'm sure Valve can, but. It's a tough question to answer. And I agree. I, like, I was worried about it overstaying its welcome this time around. Like, my memory of the game is that it went on for too long. But it's not that at all. I think you're, you're right. Like, the way that... It's the same thing. Like, you get a little taste of, like, right, this is what that world is. Like, you're slowly walking through it. And then starting to get the gel addition. So you're adding motion to your puzzle solving. I think that was a piece that was very much, like oh, now this game is something new and something fresh. Again, I don't know what the next mechanic is after that, but... Um, yeah, no, I, I, I really, really liked it. Is there anything you were kind of let down by in the game? Not that... I, we need to... Hmm. Uh, I wasn't, like the biggest fan actually this time around of the gel puzzles i remember liking them the very first time i played it this time i was just like i don't know like it, it's cool but that one i was i was starting to feel a little worn out on for sure um but i also just it, it it's probably more of a me thing than the game too like it just took me a bit the process like what i needed to do where and uh how to approach it but I don't know if it was like the worst thing, but it was definitely something I just remembered for some reason, just feeling differently about this time around, which was interesting. The uh, no, I, I guess if I guess if I have to pick a like a like a weak point here, I would say the gel is probably it for me as well. But I don't know, I, I don't know. like I, like I said, it, like it gets introduced and playing through it again, I realized like I thought that gel section was as long as like the first section of the game before you got the old aperture and it's not it's like mm -hmm. super short there's only mm -hmm. a handful of puzzles with the gel so like again i think I, I think that just goes back to my point of like this game knew like when to pivot away or towards something and um yeah and like on the re like especially the replay of it with knowing kind of like i was like, iffy about the gel the first time around like it being real short was a, a blessing What stays with you the most after Portal 2? It's, it, honestly, it's Steven Merchant as Wheatley. Like, I remember when I played this game, I ended up watching the Ricky Gervais show to hear him, Ricky Gervais. I, it, it was Eric, um, who's the idiot? Uh, <laughs> I forget his name, but, uh, like, just to listen to him talk and, like, be funny, like, just... <laughs> I don't think I like, ever watched, like, it didn't inspire me to watch movies with Steven Merchant, but, like, it got me at least to that, and, like, I just, I, I think that's the thing I always think of. I think of Wheatley, like, that, like from the first, he, he's, like, your companion from, like, the first seconds of the game when he comes in yeah. and bails you out. His arc as a character, uh, where he, once he gets power, he becomes power hungry, but he's an idiot, he doesn't know how to use it. Uh, I, it all just plays, that, that character arc makes the story for me. Besides Cave Johnson. No, I, I think you're right. Like, when uh, he had that show, Hello Ladies, on HBO back whenever, when that came about, I I don't know, that might have missed me radar-wise, like, back then. But the fact that I was like, oh, that's the guy, what was from Portal 2? Um, I was, like, you know, excited to see it. What about you, Mark? Uh, Kind of the opposite. Like, GLaDOS. Um stood out to me the most more than anything like i started really appreciating the way gladys was written like between the, the first game and then learning about the whole like carolyn connection and getting to where it is now and yeah it just it makes you think about just that whole like robot side of things and ai what have you but yeah just just for for her to become more self-aware than she ever was before and 
the way that she just deals with you throughout the whole thing. I, 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 that's probably one of the best written characters with good character development that I've, that's like most notable to me. (laughs) For sure. And that's supposed to like, that is such a complicated character too, because it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be the antagonist of the game. Of course, there's a shift to Wheatley like midway through, but like, she's the main antagonist. And then, like, you have to deal with that, like, I have a greater enemy right now, so let's work together. Like, it's it's such a weird balance to not screw up that character in, that, in those moments. And you're right, it's another very well-written character in this game with great development. Yeah, and it's not as simple as just, like, a I hate you thing. Like, it, it becomes, like, a very, like, neutral thing by, like, by the end of it. And it's just like, you know what, man? Maybe fighting isn't isn't the way. And... That's another thing to appreciate about Portal overall, is that, like, yeah, there's, like, some some kind of combat in it, but it's not necessarily about that. But, yeah, GLaDOS definitely forever will stand out to me. Yeah, I think there's a reason why our default for, like, and this was just transparency for the listeners, but if you're seeing the album art for this week's episode we did that months back like as soon as we knew this game was on the list and one of the first ones we were going to be doing we put together that album art and potato was the first thing we all thought of prior to even revisiting the game it's just like that was the the lasting memory was glados and her journey in this game and then the uh infinite fall where she famously I, yeah. says, i'm a potato <laughs> yep <laughs> that, that whole thing like that just it, it immediately like just moves that game and that story forward into the next chapter it yeah it i I think the way you set this one up matt by saying it's one of those first examples of like the matt mythos like the matt (laughs) video game mythos like this is it was definitely one of those times where i think we played whatever we played for a while, right? Like, I remember being a kid, and you play what you play, that's it. I hit those teenage years where I got a little more interested in skateboarding and playing guitar and whatever else, burning stuff. And still played video games, but my video game stuff was like, we would rent some things here and there. A lot of Tony Hawk, Grand Theft Auto. It, it, but, like, I was not exploring the breadth of the catalogs at that point in time right where like now i'll go back and there's ps2 and gamecube and stuff of that era that i play that like i never would have thought about at that point and by the time portal 2 came around i was kind of like going through a little renaissance myself of like i think portal 2 came out i was just probably a few months after yeah four or five months after getting a ps3 for the first time because I didn't get one at launch. I had no interest in spending that much money. You'd have a second job. Um, we get it. Right. You know, <laughs> we, we had the Wii and we had a 360. So what did we need? You know what I mean? Like and that was enough for the longest time. But then going through this, it was kind of like, that was when I was exploring like all these different genres and understanding like Portal 2 was very, I think, tied to where we are now in, in so many ways. Like, especially with this season of the free cheese podcast, looking back and us being 10 years old now, I don't think we would be here without portal Two setting the stage for that. Like portal two made me want to care about games in a bigger way. I think prior to portal two, I was already getting there, like listening to podcasts and stuff that were getting me excited and tempered for certain things that would come. But like portal two was one of those ones where I was like, Oh, video games can be so much more than what I've known them to be. And then you know, we'd learned that they always kind of were. You just had to have the right lens to look at them with. Final word on Portal 2, Mark? I think Portal 2 is one of Valve's uh, best examples of what they are, what they can be, and uh, just shows, like, how they really work. Like, I think they took all their best assets from the past and put it all together in this one. And... Just, just, just to watch how it grows. Um, yeah, this is definitely like a, a standout among the rest. Matt, bring us home. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know what. Honestly, I don't know what else to say. I think we've said everything 
to say about why we love this game and and whatnot. It's uh, yeah, it's just I think Mark nailed it. It's just one of those prime examples of what Valve can do. I think it's one of those just in general what video games can do, how unique they can be. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's essentially a three button game, but it's so so clever. It's like it. I don't know. It's just it it it's a prime example of what video games can be. If you've not played Portal Two, I really encourage. It, it's one of those ones too, where like I feel like some of the games that we may talk about on the list, like I feel like Billy Hatcher is a good example of. Maybe go watch a speed run of it. You might get more out of it from just kind of seeing that. It's fun to play, I think, Billy Hatcher. But Portal, I think you could watch Portal and Portal Two to an extent, but the puzzle solving and like that kind of thing that clicks in your brain of you're doing something you're like physically involved and engaged with this i think that is important also didn't they add move support for this sorry i'm just remembering that i never Um, had it so i don't sounds right it definitely isn't on the box but yeah i think it hmm wild well, we're going to move into our next segment. We've gotten plenty of Portal 2 still talk about. In fact, our first segment is a proper sequel, which you may remember from a few weeks back. But we will use the magic of randomization to generate some video game titles. That way we can come up with a sequel for Portal that maybe Valve can't. Maybe they need a little bit of help. It's been almost 11 years. so. We're going to see what we can do to help them out. Matt, you've got the magic of randomization in front of you. Sure do. We're going to run down five titles. And one of these five titles that are selected, we will pick as the sequel to Portal 2. And we will somehow design a video game based around whatever this provides us with well i guess the first Matt. first order of business is this a proper portal three colon or if you just call it portal colon let's let's uh i don't because they have done like portal bridge constructor so there's there's been some stuff um well here let's generate the names and then we'll decide we, we need a true yeah a true successor or not all right here we go first one <laughs> britney spears nuclear horror hmm all right that's our first one should we write these oh. down? Yeah. Yeah, I, I got it. Yeah, Britney Spears' nuclear horror. Uh, next, <laughs> Italian skydiving, 1942. Uh, okay. Let's go, go. <laughs> Nasty mall throwdown. Uh, star writing solid. Star writing. Yeah. Like ben solid. Writing. Solid. Yep. Okay. And then our last one is World Devil House. Okay. So in Portal 3, Britney Spears' nuclear horror. <laughs> so none of these flow. In a nice way. I think the problem here is like they've got it so easy. They've got it with just Portal 3. They could just call it <laughs> Portal 3 and that's it. So adding a subtitle to it is difficult in and of itself. What about this? If you had to come up with a subtitle to describe Portal 2, could you? So Portal makes sense, right? We get what Portal is, especially once you see it. Portal 2 colon, what would that have been called? Uh, enemy and my enemy is the first thing that kind of pops into my head. All right, see? Okay, we're good somewhere. What do you got, Mark? Uh, kind of a cheap answer, but when they re-released Portal 1 as, like, a standalone game on Xbox, they called it Portal colon Still Alive. I think Still mm-hmm. Alive would have been a good subtitle for Portal 2. Uh-huh. That's pretty good. Yeah, like, for me, it's something like an historic nightmare or something. I, I, that 
doesn't necessarily track. But okay, so we Portal Two does make sense with a subtitle in a way. I think they, those are all they work. So Portal Three. Hmm. See, I'm not even thinking options. like wait, I'm not even wait. thinking Portal Three. I'm thinking like it's just a it's like a Half Life Alex situation. Hmm. It's a third game, but the, it's not I mean, officially a three. Minus the Britney Spears, the new clear horror kind of makes sense for an Aperture, especially the way it was going. I just don't know how to incorporate Britney Spears into something like that. I Correct. think I, she, she, you just make her a test subject. Like this is like you just it's her, but her her surroundings are all of her music video settings, oh. and those become part of the puzzles. How do I get a snake I wouldn't mind around my through. shoulders and neck? Yeah. Yeah, get that going on. Especially when you assume this will be in VR and you can look around and see the snake on your body. Okay, hear me out on this. Star writing solid. Star writing to me sounds like you are uh, kind of moving from star to star, right? Because you're you'd be moving and you'd be leaving a trail in your wake. What if the next portal game is portal motion? Right. Those are the two mechanics we have in Portal Two, but now the third. Anti gravity. We have the gravity gun from uh, Half Life. What if you've got anti grav happening here and you're floating through space doing star writing with portals where you're kind of free falling, free floating? That could be the new physics because it's got to be something physics based, right, yeah, right, right? For a sequel? No, it kind of has a lot of sets. I mean, in two, you, you, have, you have that tube that moves you and you can, you can reverse the polarity of it. Right. So, yeah, yeah but, it's, it's not too far off. I was going to say, yeah, expand upon that without gravity and do like a Super Mario Galaxy thing where different planets have different gravity rules and things like that. And also, canonically, Wheatley is out in space, technically. So, like, story-wise, it's, yeah. He did and something only he could fix. And GLaDOS and Shell have to journey out to space to retrieve him to okay. fix things. All right. Now, we've also got Italian Skydiving 1942, which, what if we did a prequel? What if we go back to before the Cave Johnson days? What if there was this technology way back then? Especially 1942, that gets into World War II territory. Everybody loves World War II, right? You could get into some sort of weird alternate parallel universe, kind of like how the Wolfenstein games do this stuff, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Right. What if and the you inverse? are Cave Johnson? Uh, right? Well, that's what, yeah, that's what I was going to say. At the end, you just are Cave Johnson. We've got Nasty Mall Throwdown was one of the options. So what if this is total spinoff, not a Portal 3, but Nasty Mall Throwdown, everybody's favorite genre, Battle Royale. It takes place in a mall, and you use portals portal guns to i don't know how you end up defeating one another but it you it's just a massive multiplayer game actually side of a mall i'm actually going to steal that from my game last week that is the proper sequel to um what's the name uh sleeping dogs my moba <laughs> oh. based so nasty mall throw down i'm actually going to claim that for myself so you got four that, left. Yeah, okay <laughs> All right, so we got that one out. So what do we like? We And then we haven't talked about World Devil House, our fifth title. What do we think about that one? I Ooh, you know what? I like this one. Now I think about it. Because you're dealing with portals, but it's always transitioning you to a, to a demon world in between. And the, oh. and the portal gun itself might be a little different and modified, and it's always shooting, like, red like almost like pentagram like portals so so that's the beauty of the start of this the story of this is what happens it's a malfunction in the gun you shoot orange you shoot blue you go to jump and as you do something happens and you don't quite make it from one to the other you end up somewhere else entirely yeah the the proper the medium (laughs) <laughs> yeah like a demon throws you like into this house and you have to keep like traveling between dimensions to try to get out I, of it also i mean mm. even even 
I like the demon idea, trust me. I really like that. But even if he did want to do that, I mean, there's always those weird, creepy vibes that Aperture brings, so you could always explore that, too. But no, I'm liking the, the malfunction demon world. I think it malfunctions, and it takes you there because you find out that, you know, the actual source of the technology was some sort of occult thing that got them to make this work, right? Because think about it, like, transporting... It's like witchcraft in a way, right? This whole teleportation nonsense. So you tap into that, you end up, you could do like really cool tarot card theme stuff. I think you could do some, some wild. Or the demons want their moon rocks back. Yeah. Like you, we, maybe they come off as demons, but it's really like all those aliens from half-life. And that's what you're like, you're tapping into. Yeah. Really bring it back to the whole valve universe. I got a Dota no. level. Just think about it. The fun we could have. I was going to say, I don't want to go there, but I guess there's also the Dota connection you could start to try and make. If they want to bridge the gap between all Valve properties, they could Dota, make Dead. it bad and incorporate all Dota. Dota Underlords. Artifact. Speaking of tarot cards. <laughs> what do, all right. What's our, what's our final front runner? What do you think? Uh, I like the... Um... I think just gameplay wise, when you think about what Portal is, it really is just it's super clever gameplay that just happens to have one of the best stories in video games. I think we lean into the gameplay again. I like the star writing solid idea uh, with the anti gravity mechanics, because I'm sure there's a lot of stuff I could think of if you gave me an hour <laughs> that you mm-hmm. can do with that. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's my vote. I'm gonna agree with that, because now I'm thinking about, to me, with that one, you are Wheelie, but then you have, like, an optional two-player support of the other core that's floating around, just saying space, which I believe is Nolan North. Um, oh. I think the whole goal is for Wheelie to apologize, but writes, I'm sorry, on using stars, and wants to show <laughs> that message. <laughs> that's really good that's very portal-esque too I, I really like that I think you guys are both right I think that is the logical choice I just also full slayer on the brain <laughs> I like that world devil house idea quite a bit I also like the Italian skydiving 1942 I don't, know what, this, I don't know what the skydiving a, like, mechanic is just Italian skydiving 1942 looks like a, looks like a PS2 game I would find in a bin my first thought oh, was yeah. a racer. No one's supposed to buy that game. My, it's a racing game. Like, you know, like, I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not nothing to do with skydiving. It's just a racing it's like, game. That it's like bundled with Italy. a paintball game. Because <laughs> yeah. there's those definite things where, like, I can't think of the games now, but there are video games that happen where, I don't know, you get a very popular series, and then you find out that, like, some random game for a computer that you never owned was the actual prequel of it and has nothing to do with it gameplay wise or anything. I feel like that's what this is. You know what? Hobbyists out there, because there's plenty of people now what are making PS1 games and things like that. As we get into that, make the bargain bin game. Go for Italian Skydiving 1942, put Cave Johnson in it, do something weird with it, and just put it out there. Has not, don't put a portal gun in there. Don't do anything. Just make it a proper prequel. I'll buy it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Our next segment, demo disc. Uh, this is a new one for for the season and for this week. In this segment, our panelists are going to be given a theme, and they have to then assemble a demo disc that will be given out with any purchase of a personal pan pizza. So I've got some themes here. I'm going to read out the theme name, and you guys are going to tell me. What video game demos come on this disc? I think we'll see how it goes. We'll see how they flow. But I would say aim for like, I don't know. A good demo disc has what? Like five demos on it and a weird interview with the developer and then like a music <laughs> video that no one asked for. And a dumb, so, dumb hints and tr- t- uh, tips and tricks for uh, yeah. a game that no one played. 
Exactly. Yeah. Did you Italian want to get skydive in 1942? For... <laughs> yeah, right. Here's how to unlock Britney Spears and Nasty Mall Throwdown. All right. First theme for your demo disc included with the purchase of a personal pan pizza. The trees are alive. Okay. Trees are alive. I'm going to put, I'm going to say either a demo. I guess it could be any of the three games, but I think more or less interact with them more in the two towers game, but the Lord of the Rings, the two towers giant hmm. tree boys i forget what they're one. called but let's we can throw that on there first that was my first instinct i don't know what a trees are alive i don't know why i'm asking this but it doesn't matter what system right <laughs> yeah no that's a good good clarification <laughs> this is uh, a weird demo disc that will work on any <laughs> platform <laughs> regardless of, yeah it's essentially any a rom any... hack rom a rom hack yeah uh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Have we clear that up? Man, oh, I, man, I can't. I can't remember if. I can't remember if like Conquer or Banjo had actually talking trees in them. I don't know if they did, but there's another Nintendo 64 game that I feel like Mark should be. Yeah, immediately... that was. That's my choice oh, now. You... That's okay. <laughs> Ocarina of Time. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the Great Deku Tree needs an appearance here. While well, I'll give you guys a second to think, I think um, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, not that there's necessarily trees that are alive, but as you walk through those woods, there's stuff that comes out of the trees that attacks you that is scary and, and alarming. So I feel like the woods are alive in that sense. I feel like something's there to get you. Okay. Oh, uh, what's that? Um... Is it that idea, it, uh, that game that um, Ben played a lot of? Was it The Forest? Oh, yeah. I think, like, using that idea of, like, you know, the wood, like, the woods, the the life inside is, is coming for you. I think uh, a little demo of that could fit here. Oh, I don't know the name off the top of my head. I think it's called, I th oh, I think it's called Witch Hunt. Oh, could be wrong. Um, it's just it's, it's, a, it's an indie game, but uh, you you basically you just have to go out and fight supernatural creatures or like hunt for like specific ones or whatever. But I there's like a giant tree creature that tries to blend in with the forest, and you just have to go looking for it and like hunt it down, and it takes forever to to, to shoot it down. But um. That creature looks like, I mean, it's it's all it's all tree, but when it's hiding, it looks like it's like two or three trees like blended together. It's pretty insane. Witch hunt, maybe is that what you said? Yeah, I think it's called witch hunt. Hmm. I think we've got a pretty good uh, demo disc there put together for the trees are alive. The problem with this segment is that now I kind of want to like make box art for this like make the little disc <laughs> the, the cardboard paper disc holder thing and now i, I kind of want to do all that all right our next one <laughs> uh too hot for tv is the theme that's where you what put demos? conquer's conquer's bad fur day <laughs> yeah conquer's bad fur day probably ends up on there leisure suit Specifically larry the sunflower section all the leisure suit larry games oh yeah yeah the guy game Oh no, that was just <laughs> <laughs> no, that was just too uh, bad. Conquer's bad for a day is probably uh, the the other ones I said jokingly, of course, but Conquer's bad for a day for sure. I think makes sense. Do we dare put BMX XXX on there? Yeah, I think you have to put BMX XXX. <laughs> uh, dead or alive volleyball, oh. Stream Beach volleyball. Oh, oh yeah, yes. that's yes, <laughs> yes. It is Witch Hunt, by the way. Confirmed. Um, Witch Hunt. Nice. Yeah. Uh, too hot for TV. It's like, uh, it's like an anime with something dumb <laughs> that leads into that. Oh, probably any of the... Um, crap. I'm always bad with names. Here we go again. The 
It's like Sega and Kagura games or whatever. I forget. Oh, very, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Very, uh... Definitely too high for TV, probably. Oh, Catherine. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that toes the line, I think. <laughs> Have you seen the like the opening cutscenes of that game? Yes. Yes, it does. Very I'm not. I, promiscuous. I, I need to buy that and play that. Catherine's one of those games where for years I've had it on every wish list I could possibly have. Every time it goes on sale, I look at it and I'm like, I should play that. But is, I just, I don't. Is Bayonetta too hot for TV? Mm-hmm. Dude. Potentially. <laughs> Potentially. Oh, near Automata. Yeah, especially when you self destruct. Uh-huh. Too hot <laughs> for TV. Our next one comes uh, sponsored. This is a sponsorship tie in with it's cross promoting another popular brand, but this demo disc theme is Now That's What I Call Music. The fine folks who bring you fantastic CDs to listen to also want to work with video game creators to put out a demo disc. I mean, rock band or guitar hero, right? That's the obvious one. I thought the obvious one was Spice World. See that now you're. I was thinking that or Britney's dance beat. I was thinking Britney's beat probably I'm still staring at Britney Spears nuclear horror. <laughs> or I'm always looking at. I'm <laughs> constantly staring at Britney Spears nuclear horror. Don't you worry about that. Britney Spears dance beat now means something though. She's free, so yeah, definitely worth. Definitely worth uh, have it on this. Ugh. Uh, uh, did... If you don't want to lean into the music thing too much. Rhythm game, pat upon. Yeah, buddy. I still, I still have to play those. Oh, I just had it. Um, I guess it's more of a question, but does Space Channel Five have licensed music? Ooh, I don't know if it does, but does that matter? I think. Uh... I guess not. You're right. It doesn't. But. That's Poppy a good one, enough, though. Throw that in there. Yeah, that's a really good one. Yeah, I don't know that it does, but it that belongs in this list. I think that fits with this vibe too of like, yeah. I think I think we got some good music based video games there. Our next one comes to you straight from 1996. Technology overdose. Technology overdose. I'm going to say Deus Ex Machina. Mm. Or no, it's just Deus Ex, right? It's just Deus Ex. I think the Sorry. Machina was something else, yeah. right? Yeah. There's yeah. a comic book. And, I mean, also, it, it's a phrase. That, <laughs> yeah. The God machine. Yeah. Deus Ex. Deus Ex. But I'm thinking of, like, the original, like, no, first no, one. No, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, System Shock. That's a good one. That's a good one. My first thought is not out of one on his list because it doesn't deserve its glory, <laughs> but Enter the Matrix was on my uh, I thought you were going to say something. No, you know what? No, no, no. I, I, I oh, think yeah. it deserves a spot because you don't want to own that game. You just want to play the demo and then be done with it. Good point. Yeah, because that game one? could be neat in a demo capacity. Enter the Matrix. Both. <laughs> oh, both. Enter the Matrix. I was mostly referred. But yeah, both. <laughs> I think the first thing that came to mind for me was Bride of Pinbot. Oh. I know that's pinball, but I, you know. That is a good one. Yeah. Any other big ones for technology overdose? Uh, I don't think it makes sense, but I was thinking like something along the lines of Hacknet. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, that's. Because the thing with a demo disc is, I think Hacknet is a great game and I love playing it, but if I were someone playing a demo disc with all of the other games we just said and then I got to Hacknet, I'd be like, what is, why, did, who would play that? You know what I mean? Yeah. And then that would be the secret one that like, I would play it years later and then look back and go, man, I had like a demo disc with this weird, cool game on it where you were, you know what I mean? Like Hacknet would be that game. Hacknet, and you need that's, like, I, I it throws it up. Uh, yes. You could use the Hacknet stuff to break the demo disc, and that's how you get all your hidden interviews and 
tips and tricks for Italian skydive in 1942. <laughs> That's how yeah, you Yeah, uh, this is the thing the where they versions. would work. Yeah. Yeah, they would work with the developer of this to build the whole design menu of this and everything. Uh, last theme I've got. Sailors Gone Wild. Um, Ubisoft's unreleased boat game. What's it called? Oh, Skull and Bones? Skull and Bones. Yeah, just get a demo for that. It's when awesome. is a pirate a sailor? Why I had to put Beyond Good and Evil 2 in there. <laughs> um, with the NFTs, of course. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I'm done with the Ubisoft jokes. Um, Battleship. Mm, yes. Why not? <laughs> yeah. What was it? What was it? Sailors? I know. Sailors Gone Wild. Sailors Gone Wild. I feel any Sailor Moon game is... I don't know if that's too on the nose. I think, yeah, you could do that. One of those fighters or, yeah. You've got uh, Shenmue, I think, makes sense in this regard. <laughs> like, just put a demo of Shenmue up there. Just the spot where you're, yeah, looking to find some sailors. Man, I'm trying, like... I'm trying to think of a clever... Like boat game, I can't think of one. Sea of Thieves, Hydro Thunder. Oh, Hydro Thunder. All right, now we're talking. Actually, Sea of Thieves, you do actually have to like coordinate to be a sailor in that, right? Like, right. Yeah. Operating the boat. I'm gonna be cheeky and say Wind Waker. There you go. Mm. There you go. I like that. Wild as an adventure. <laughs> I yeah. No, I like that too. Uh, that's five though, right? I I don't have anything really yeah. to contribute. Well, Matt, you had one more theme for our demo disc. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, tying this back to Portal Two, the theme is just blue and orange. Oh man, every video game released between two thousand nine <laughs> and twenty thirteen. They all had the same cover of blue and orange. Yeah, some some Need for Speed game. Uh... <laughs> NBA Jam, because I feel like it was a blue background, but then you've got the orange basketball. Uh, what was that mm. Jason Bourne game? The they made Bo- a Jason Bourne game? The Bourne mm-hmm. Legacy? It might have been. I, maybe. It actually wasn't a bad game, but people fight dirty in that. <laughs> You can find multiple people. They don't wait their turn. They will hit you when you're not looking. <laughs> um, I remember that cover being mostly like blue and orange. Which the is boring the conspiracy, and it very much is blue and orange. I'm looking at the cover right now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> was it Matt Damon's likeness? Or... No, I nope. think this is this was more taken from the novels than the movies. Uh, okay. Uh, Rocket League. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. one. Uh, and subsequently, every other competitive sports game that has ripped off Rocket League with the blue and orange scoring system. Ooh, even before it, uh, Monday Night Combat. Oh, yeah, buddy. Throwback. Mm. I guess they had two games, but I don't know when the second one was. I don't know if I have much else for blue and orange. You could do like um, one of the Mario, one of the new Super Mario Brothers games where you get alternate, like Mario eats the the ice flower, so he's blue, but Luigi eats it and he's orange. <laughs> I feel like there's something in there. Yeah, it's uh. As far as we got as many as we did. Yeah. Well, Joe listed probably thousands of video games from 2019, or what was it, 2009 to 2019? Oh, you know, you know what? Every single cover. You know what? Let's throw in that that Nickelodeon All Stars Brawl, whatever game, (laughs) because only Michelangelo and Leonardo are in it. (laughs) Oh, yeah. 
And in a demo, in a proper demo, you would only be able to play select characters from the roster. So you would just have those two as the playable characters. Oh, no. I was hoping you, it would limit the demo to only one of them. You already oh limited it, and it is limited to one. They would. <laughs> they totally would. It is time for Mark and Matt to enter the Trivia Dungeon. We last found our adventurers right on the edge of something unknown. So, as we move forward this week, we'll have to see what awaits them in the darkness. I need to quickly share my screen with Matt and Mark and make sure I only show them what they are supposed to see and not the full trivia list. Oh, you can show it all. It's okay. I won't tell. Now, last time you both made it through a a good number of spaces. Remember, for Trivia Dungeon, in order for you to move forward, you must correctly answer the question. We got a Chaos Emerald. You did unlock a gem of some kind. Oh, that would be red, but... I just saw Sonic and Knuckles for that demo disc. Oh, yeah, that would be good. Sonic 2, blue and orange. I need... Okay, that'll work. Because a small demo of Sonic's enough for you to know that that game sucks. <laughs> Come on. Aww. <laughs> I want to go fast right into a wall and I have to jump and the platform is terrible. Well, let's see if you can go fast <laughs> through this gate. I mean, you guys really only have one option, but I'll, I'll still let you make the call, I guess. <laughs> You're currently standing in cell E4. Right now, the only open path is this red dotted door into F4. Are you ready to take the step? The only Absolutely. way is through, right? I need to... There we go. Oh no! Oh. A monster awaits you. You'll need to answer two questions to defeat this monster. Are you ready? Bring it on. Before Squids, which animal was originally planned as the player character in Splatoon? Beep, beep. Uh, that would be. Rabbits. It is rabbits. Correct. I would never got that one. Good the job, monster Mark. takes a blow. <laughs> Let's see if we can hit him with one more. The PlayStation 2's main CPU was custom designed by Sony and Toshiba. What was it called? Okay, I'm not confident anymore. <laughs> <laughs> What was the question? Sorry, one more time. The PlayStation 2's main CPU was custom designed by Sony and Toshiba. What was it called? CPU? What is the name of the PS2's CPU? I couldn't tell you any console CPU. No. Is this something? Is this one was particularly notable. Like, it was talked about quite a bit around the time. Let me, I'll lead you a little bit here. What do you feel the name of the CPU was called? Uh, that's what I was going to say. It's going to be some stupid, like... Um, this is probably not in the field at all, but for some reason Vulcan came to my head. Ooh. I, you're, it's not close, but I like yeah. the way you're thinking. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what I thought. Okay. It's like, it's going to be some... It's like the movement engine or... Okay, so you've got half of it, and I will tell you that it is alliterative. So it's a it's a two word thing. Engine is one of them. The other one is it's the something engine. So it starts with an E. The electric engine. Um, the electronic engine. It's static. 
It's something dumb mm-hmm. with like feeling. It, um, the eccentric engine. What do we feel? The emotional engine. Uh, Bingo. Really? Mm-hmm. PlayStation do. 2's main central processing unit was custom designed by Sony and Toshiba and called Emotion Engine. <laughs> PS2 is <was> emo. <laughs> I mean, everything was in the early 2000s, right? True, I still am. I think that that is enough to strike down the monster. Now, the interesting thing here, what you're seeing on the screen, Matt and Mark, is these dotted lines. Those are open doors. You can go in any direction, up, down, left, or right. Obviously, we came from the left, so would you like to move up to F3, down to F5, or right to G4? F1 is a pretty dope racing thing. Did you want to move towards that way? Yeah, let's go that way. So we're going up to F3. Whoops, wrong thing. What awaits us? Nothing, just a blank space. But you've entered a new room, delineated by the color here. Um, And it looks like from here, you can move left to E3 or up to F2. Which direction would you like to go? And stick to the goal. E3 sounds like a trap. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. All right, so we're heading up to F2. Oh, we probably just missed a good Reggie moment. We'll come back. (laughs) And a question awaits you. How many batteries did it take to power the Sega Game Gear? Ooh, uh, six double A's? Six double A's is the correct answer. Good job. I was going to say eight. Good job. Had like three of those, thanks to a flea market. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, all right. Let's. Mark, you got that one right. Would you like to go up to F1 or left to F to E2? Our goal was F1. We got to get that out of the way. All right. We're going to move up to F1. Empty cell. That's not exciting. Story of my life. Would we like to move left to E1 or go back the way we came? You want to see what's in that E3 surprise? I kind of want to see what's in that E3. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're going back down and we're going to go left to E3. I let you down. Oh. I'm sorry. Sorry. Nothing here. No. But there is a trivia question awaiting you. I was going to say, you didn't let us down. E3 let us down. <laughs> <laughs> Wave Race 64 originally featured what vehicle when shown at the 1995 Nintendo Shoshinkai show? It was another vehicle? Um, (laughs) Was it still called Wave Race? It was still called Wave Race. Was it Surfboards? It was not surfboards. Hmm. Matt, what vehicle was originally featured in Wave Race 64 when shown at the 1995 Nintendo Shoshinkai show? I'm putting out my games, I think. Was it a jet ski? Or are you on jet skis? Well, Wave Race was jet skis in the final. So, speedboats? Correct. It was boats. Uh, fun fact, it was known as F-Zero on water, but Shigeru Miyamoto worried that boats would not differentiate the game enough from similar games on other systems. So after the show, he made the request the team move to bo- uh, jet skis. Wow. Very good. Old claim. Would we like to move up to E2 or left to D3? Hmm. Mighty Ducks, D3. Oh, D3 is a letdown. We'll go to D2. D3, another empty cell. 
but a trivia question awaits you nonetheless. Mark and Matt, can you name two characters who were originally planned for Super Smash Brothers? This would have been Super Smash Brothers for the Nintendo 64. Two characters who were originally planned but did not make the cut. Uh, did they eventually make the cut? They did. Bowser? Bowser is one of the characters. Uh, I don't know the, the Peach. Roster. Peach is not one of them. Wow. Wario? Or is he... Wario is not one of them. I want to be cool to see Wario I, in 64. I will say that Wario was introduced in the same game as one of these other characters' eventual introduction. Pit? Not Pit. Uh. Um, I don't know. So Wario was new in Brawl. What was it, Matt? I know. I don't know that. I don't know the difference between that roster and Melee. I don't know who are the uh, originals. Not Ness. Is Ness? Ness was in the original. Okay. Yeah. Um. It would it be? No, zero two wouldn't make sense. They didn't Would it be cheating concept? for me to bring up the original thing for myself? I don't think so. Uh, would it be... Wolf? Ooh, not Wolf. That's a really good guess. Unless I'm wrong <laughs> about the... Because fo- I, I also am not confident. Like, I'm confident, but... We got Bowser. Uh... Diddy Kong? Not Diddy Kong. Uh, um... Can't be Luigi. I don't. Wouldn't I don't be know. Waluigi then, or Daisy. Scratch those out. Meta Knight. Close. Very close. King DDD. King DDD uh, was originally planned for Nintendo 64. And along with Meta Knight, you were also very close with M because Marth and Mewtwo were also planned for Super Smash Brothers. Wow, I didn't The know four that. answers I had were Marth, King DDD, Bowser, and Mewtwo. Huh. I would love to know if I was incorrect. I believe my sources were correct, but if listeners out there are, have been screaming this entire time that Wolf was actually supposed to be the first Smash Brothers character... <laughs> Let me know. Podcast at the dot com. Yeah, Martha wasn't expecting. That's pretty neat. So we have we shouldn't do it with the amount of freaking characters from that franchise. <laughs> you've answered five questions this time. However, two of them were in one cell for the boss fight. So I think you've got one more question in you. Which direction would we like to go, fellas? D2 or C3? D2, the, the better, Mighty Dog. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Uh-oh. Oh! Is that a garlic bulb? The smell of garlic is exciting. I wonder what it's for. There's a vampire somewhere around. <laughs> or a Wario. <laughs> You've unlocked garlic. All right. At this point, you do not need to answer a question to move forward, but uh, you want to take one more step and see if we can get another question unlocked? Uh, Sure. Which which directions do we have? Can we go up? So you can go right to E2, up to D1, left to C2. Oh, okay. Or, of course, you can go back the way you came and go down to C3. This is, this is kind of turned into like an open square area. I I think there's something bad in the middle. I don't know if you, we do we want to complete this like squarish area we might be getting. I say we finish D regardless. Okay. So we're going up to D one. A question awaits you. Jet Moto featured logos of real-life branding on its racers. Name one 
of these brands? Uh, Jet Moto one. Yes. Or or just like as of just a series in general. I think it was Jet Moto one that had the brands. I think two dropped them, or it may have been the other way around. Two added them, and one didn't have them. But whichever uh, one, I know one exclusively has Butterfinger. Butterfinger is one of the answers I have here. All right. Very good. Yeah, so it was Mountain Dew, Butterfinger, and K2 Sports were the three brands. I think Mountain Dew stayed in the second one. I think you're right. That was the question before recording when I told you uh, Mark would be upset if he didn't get a question right. That was one of the questions. You're right. (laughs) I totally would. Yeah. Well, you guys have uncovered quite a bit of this map, although we still have quite a bit to see what remains. So we'll come back in a couple weeks with another adventure through the trivia dungeon. Until then, listeners, of course, if we got anything wrong, I want to know if I screwed something up there. If you'd like to contribute a video game trivia question that you think might stump Mark or Matt or even me, said trivia master, please write in podcast at thefreecheese.com and let us know. Our final segment before, of course, we rank Portal 2 among the greats of the list is a weekly roundtable question. And this week, I want to know, what video game needs a Mother 3 handbook? For those listening unaware of the Mother 3 handbook, it is a product that was developed by Fangamer. One of the first products outside of making Ness and Lucas themed shirts from Earthbound and Mother 3. But the Mother 3 handbook was a project attempted to recreate the Earthbound guidebook that was included with the purchase of the NES game. And it not only has detailed information about... It's not just a strategy guide for Mother 3, but it kind of goes into detail. It's like a tour guide into the world of mother three so every area you travel to there's detailed information about the area almost like a passport or a guide or like a pamphlet guide to a, these towns um it was also created by i think a dedicated fan community behind the game so they really included everything they could from lore to little homages things like that they also went through the detail of creating clay models of the characters in the game because that was something that was in the original strategy guide was pictures of clay models from earthbound. And they did that for mother three, all in this one nice little book. So to that end, what video game needs a mother three handbook? So I went weird with this one. Yeah, um, get weird. Pokemon. Uh-huh. But more specifically, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do like Gen 2 or Gen 1, but I think for this sake, I'll do Gen 1. Uh, so if you ever got that cartridge when it first came out, red red or blue, or I think I think Pikachu had it as well. Um, but there's a little booklet. There's a game manual, but it's disguised as a trainer's guide or trainer's handbook or something like that. Oh, uh, yeah. And I thought that was the coolest thing. It, it, it does a pretty good job on its own. I don't really think you need to do much with it, but I think if you can take that and run with it and expand it and actually make it look like a legit trainer's handbook and f- flush it out a little more of what they had in there, you can almost make it almost look like a um like a like a world in, like a world encyclopedia thing. Oh yeah. You know, make it more thematic with it and make it feel more within that within Kanto. Speaking of be... fan gamer, have you seen seen uh, their product, A Field Guide to Kanto? I feel like I have, but I wasn't it's sure. It's not if... exactly the same thing. As, it's Yours is, is way different, but they do have that where it's, uh, was it Carrie Fry, I believe is the artist? And yeah. it's a kind of like, you know, like the Darwin notebooks of different bird species and stuff. It's like that, but these like. Right. It's Drawings just, it's, of all the Pokemon. Right, it's just about the Pokemon. It's not, not so much about the game. Yeah, I think, yeah. No, yeah. I, I I love your approach, though. 
really make you feel like you are becoming a Pokemon trainer. Yeah, and you, you get a little bit of info in each town, some 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 pics about it, whatever. Like, kind of like way back when we were talking about like the like the pamphlet stuff, but like kind of thrown in into this. Yeah, yeah. What I think the neat thing with your idea too is like think about just I mean Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow going to Lavender Town alone. There's so mm. much fan theory and lore actual things like that that are related to lavender town and how spooky and scary it is and all the cool stuff that you could hint at but there's also like everything about all the towns in the original in kanto were they had stuff to them there was like a mystique to them that i think could lend itself well to like a travel guide or you know a little fun fact thing and it should keep i used to have this one strategy guide uh, with pokemon where it came with stickers so whenever you caught mm-hmm. a Pokemon, you would peel the sticker and put it into that entry. The po- yeah, yeah. And it, and it would be pictures of like the actual sprites art, like sprite art within the game. So I think they should bring that back with it too, just for funsies. Yeah, I think I still have that book somewhere. If it's not here, it's in a box somewhere. Yeah. Matt, what video game needs a Mother 3 handbook? My answer sucked before. It's going to suck even more following that brilliant idea i've i've had the uh the grand charisma series on my mind a lot here in recent let's do a handbook across i'm cheating a little bit but across all the games but like let's get details of uh like i like do like pages or half pages it might be massive if we do whole pages but do like half pages where like you have the details of the car, like the horsepower, make, model, all that stuff, but have a picture of it in real life at the time, picture of it, and it's in, you know, in the uh, in-engine model. Kind of just, like, details about the development and how they improved the tech to make it look better and better and better from each iteration uh, up into the newly released 7, I guess, or new about to be released 7. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I information about the real world uh courses how they bring that stuff the pictures of, of their mapping of the corners and all that fun stuff um yeah i don't know I, yeah not nearly as good as no i think that would pokemon. be really good and if you think about like every car has like when you buy a car you get a manual that you typically thumb through while you're waiting on paperwork to finish or something or you're bored at the uh where do you go in a car that you're stuck i don't know but uh, those places, but if you built in like a car manual, like in small f- pieces, right? Like mm-hmm. you go through here and it's like, you could learn little fun facts about some of the cars in the game. I think that would be a, a neat touch. And yeah, the showing the course details from around the world, showing the history of them or identifying like key races that have happened on those actual real world courses. I think that's a cool approach. I would be a nice coffee table book. Yeah. I like that. I, I feel like racing games don't really get that sort of treatment anyway and then like and then especially if like if you don't know what car you want and depending on the game i don't know how gran turismo does it but like having to select through cars and then trying to like memorize how good their stats are and you can't really compare the whatever you want to compare it to is always been a struggle of mine like i even have that yeah. trouble in like mario kart so yeah. like i think having it in a physical form and be able to flip through pages and compare and contrast is a very good convenient way yeah that's creative i like that uh, yeah i like that too I came up with this question without an answer and then reviewing notes and everything for this week. I read that question again. And the first thing that popped in my head was Bayonetta. So Mm. I, instead of fighting the the thought, I let my creativity wander and come up with an idea that actually suits Bayonetta. And I think I've got something neat. I think what you would do is you build it like a, like a book of spells or something like that, right? Because Bayonetta is a witch. The game itself is very reliant on combos to do well. So I think you can incorporate the combos as different spells and things like that in the game. There's also the whole crafting mechanic with Bayonetta where you're kind of finding different things to make different lollipops in the game for her to eat to get different power-ups temporarily or not or health recovery. So I think that you could build the actual recipes in there. That would be a nice little touch. And then you do go to all of these different places in Bayonetta. So you could have little details about the parts of the map and why there are certain demon types here and certain enemy types there. I think you go to the Gates of Hell to meet with, I forget the character's name now, but he's the guy that sells you upgrades to your 
feet pistols and your swords and all the other stuff <laughs> you can have a whole like breakdown section about the gates of hell and how to purchase what to purchase etc fun tips on how to earn extra halos to spend on this stuff but i think like designing it physically like a witch spell book would be a neat like thing like and you'd open it up every page is just black with white text on it um or you could go with like the the coffee stained you yeah. know or tea stained paper with like etched black writing although that would be kind of difficult to read for a long time but yeah bayonetta came to mind yeah i was thinking uh before pokemon kind of in a similar idea of what you had but i was going to be for um shimagami tensei yeah that'd be really good too just a good especially like with how many the way that you summon demons in that game by combining two other demons like seeing all the different permutations spelled out would be really nice yeah before wikipedia there were these uh (laughs) things called books that were pretty cool yeah i don't remember the last time i used a good strategy guide but like because now i think everything's just so easy to jump to game facts or find some thread somewhere where someone's stuck in the same spot you're stuck at get the answer and move on but having like when I played through Mother 3 for the first time, I played through with that handbook in tow. And same thing with Earthbound. Like, I used that Earthbound strategy guide, like, because it felt like more than just, like, telling you what to do. It was more like inviting you into the world, where certain strategy guides were literally, like, walk up, walk left, do this, okay, go. You know what I mean? It was just that over and over mm-hmm. again, where these felt like an actual companion to the game rather than telling you what to do. I would say probably the last, that Earthbound one is probably the last walk like strategy guy that i used when i played actually it's probably it was around this time four years ago whenever when i first played yeah we've made it to the end of the episode but we're not quite done yet this is time for us to rank portal 2 on the list if you want to follow along at home as the weeks continue the freecheese.com slash the list We'll show you every game we've ranked so far, what our individual review scores were of those games, and which episode you can go back and listen through to see what we kind of thought about it. Portal 2. Right now our list stands Devil's Crush at the top, followed by Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. Where do we feel for Portal 2? Uh, top. I, yeah. The, feel pretty good about putting it at the top yeah well this is pretty good we just keep getting better and better each week with uh with where these video games are so uh yeah that one's pretty straightforward i i don't know well you know who knows maybe next week we won't supersede what's already there we'll find out um next week we are talking about SSX Tricky, the sequel to SSX, the prequel to SSX 3. SSX Tricky. Uh, So that one's out, what, PS2 and GameCube, I believe, were the two platforms. I don't know if that one came to Xbox or not. I know SSX 3 did, but Tricky, I don't know. So head to your local flea market. (laughs) <laughs> or retro video game shop grab a copy before next week check out ssx tricky maybe you still have your copy lingering around come back and talk about that with us for the free cheese episode 438 i've been joe dix that is mark augustiniak and matt Selner. this was portal 2 thank you very much for hanging out with us Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Matt. And thank you, listener, for listening. We'll be back next week. Bye.